Okay, and now we're looking at number 45? Yeah, we're right. just adding the one's point. So what's the chemical reaction that's happening? Same. Same chemical reaction. We're making up the NaOH, right? I'm sorry? Oh yeah, they didn't say what the base is. We just know it has to be a strong base, because you guys haven't learned how to titrate a weak acid and a weak base. That's why that's not in the handout. Um, so if you're doing a titration with a weak acid, it has to be with a strong base. You know, actually, that might have messed people up on this problem. Yeah. So we know that the uh, base has to be strong because you guys haven't learned weak, uh, weak acid and weak base. That, that would be a weird titration that's not generally done anyway. So um, that's not practical. So, um, so what should be our starting amounts here? How much are we starting with in the formic acid? 0.2 and 0.2 of any And still 0 over here. So the change would be? 0.2. Because the reaction is going to completion. So what are our ending amounts? Zero. And the other ending amounts. Point 0.2. Now what? Now we do the initial Hassel one. Now, which case are we in now? Mm -hmm. Now we're in the... Uh, I don't... Uh, which case is this row? Now, oh, so no acid and only conjugate base. Yeah. Which means we don't even bother calling it a conjugate because there's not, it's a conjugate is there. So which of the cases are we in from above the thick line? We're just... Uh, a base. The weak base. Yeah, now we do the weak base. weak base. So let's work this out. So we have to remember how to do a weak base by itself, which we did one example of last time. Mm -hmm. So what's the chemical reaction that will happen now? HCO minus plus H2O. There's nothing else for it to react with, so now we have to have it react with the water. So we need um, HCO plus H plus O. This goes to equilibrium because there's nothing strong left. So what should the change be? Um, minus x. Now we have to use x. Very good. And our final amount, and what would this change be? Uh, x plus x. Okay, good. Oh, and this we also have to plus say. X, yeah. So it'd be x squared over 0.2 is equal to the Ka, which is 1.77. So x squared over 0.2 equals a x squared less than the problem. So then you solve for x. Can you tell me what you got for x? I got 0.005948. All right, so 0.0059, good. And then pH. Oh. The log of x. Now that would give us the pOH, right? Yeah, and then you subtract yeah. that from the other. So the pOH equals negative log. And you subtract that from the pH. So there's a lot of work on this problem. So I got the POH is 2.2. And then the pH would be 11.77. That's not right, though. Yeah, it's not. Shoot. Uh. What is the pH of a 0.2 molar formic acid solution?
Um, what's the, what, here we use the Ka. Now, the Ka is the equilibrium uh, constant for an acid reaction, but this is a base reaction. So it's a cathode using Kw equals Ka times Kb. That's right. All right, good problem here. So all our work is wrong. Uh, it's, well, most of the work over here. So let's try again. We know that the Ka times the Kb is 10 to the negative 14. It's good that you remember that rule. So we know that the Kb here is 10 to the negative 14, and our Ka was 1.77 times 10 to the negative 4. So it's 5 point. 5.65 times 10 to the negative 11th. 5.65 times 10 to the negative 11th. All right, so that would be 5.65. Yeah, I hope so. <clears throat> 10 to the negative 11th, so x is going to be. So x is 3.36. Pretty small. 3.36 times 10 to the negative 6. Mm -hmm. All right, so then the P of H is the negative log 3.36. So that would, POH would be 5.5. pH is 8.5? Mm -hmm. That's right? Yeah. yeah. Thank goodness. Okay. Quick question. How did we know that we needed, that we were doing OH and KB? Because we were looking at... Yeah. Let's discuss that. So first of all, which case are we in here? We're in a weak base by itself. This is a base ionization reaction. Well, the equilibrium constant for a base ionization is the Kb. So we should have been using Kb. OK, uh, even though they gave us Ka. So we had to change that into Kb. So that's a common trap. Um, and secondly, what does X stand for here? It stands for hydroxide concentration, as we can see from the table. That's how we know that the uh, negative log of the X is the pOH and not the H. That's just one more good reason to use these okay. tables. A lot of the time the TA just jumps to this equation, but then you don't know what X stands for. So if you use the table, you know what X stands for. And that tells us that we were figuring out the POH. Okay. So what did we do now? We started with um, a weak base, no, a weak acid and a strong base. Which case did we do? Weak acid, strong base with equal amounts of acid and base. Earlier we did different amounts of the acid and base. Which then took us to just the weak that takes us to this. Notice that your first instinct was to try to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation down here, but that's only when we have both a weak acid and its conjugate, and not when we have right either by themselves. Region. I'm sorry? We knew we weren't in the buffer region. We should have done that anyway. That's right. The equivalence point is not the buffer region. And why is it not? Because you don't have both the weak acid and its conjugates. So notice how, again, what we're learning here is every time you do one of the cases below the thick line in the handout, there's two steps. There's one step. And then that puts you into one of the cases above the thick line. And you have to do that work all over again. And you have to figure out which case you're in. There's many different cases that you could end up in there. Uh, that's why it's so hard to learn this. There's so many different cases. OK, so you should put in your notes where you have weak acid and strong base in equal amounts. And this was the equivalence point.